your last trip? Well, my last trip, I actually got a chance to go to Marshall, Texas. Now, uh, a lot of people talk about Juneteenth. You know, we talk about Juneteenth all the time. But without Marshall, there would have been no Juneteenth. Let me take, let me break it down for you. you had, the Confederate Army was divided into two units. You had the Trans Mississippi East, Trans Mississippi West. Now, most of the battles were fought by the Trans Mississippi East. For example, there were 14 battles fought in the state of Texas. There were 479 fought in Virginia alone. The majority of the battles fought during the Civil War were fought by the Trans Mississippi East. Everything was going along good. It was almost even money until the Battle of Vicksburg. Now, in the Battle of Vicksburg, one of the things that happened was things started going bad for the Confederacy. They came up with a plan called Refugee, where they were going to farms and everything, and they were buying the slaves at 50 cents on the dollar. It's better that you sell them to us than to let them be turned loose and they go wild, you know. So that's what they was doing. They say in the process of doing that, they had close to 30,000 refugees that traveled all the way from across the, across the south into Texas. Not only that, they decided that they were going to move the Confederate White House to Marshall, Texas. Marshall, Texas had the highest concentration of slaves in the five larger districts, including Dallas, Houston, San Antonio. Marshall was right in there. And close to 50,000 moved into Marshall. Marshall was going to be the second Confederate White House under a general, under a general by the name of Kirby. Kirby was in charge of the Trans-Mississippi West and five different Confederate states had moved their leadership to Marshall, Texas. Wow. And the second Confederate White House was going to be in Marshall. Kirby didn't want to make a move because he cut a deal with the French. That's why the story about the last cotton crop comes in. The last cotton crop, was they wanted to get the last cotton crop, but why? It wasn't about money. It was about bonus and power. They was going to cut a trade with the French. But that's a story for another day. Kirby was going to go down there and make that move. Now, when Kirby went to make the move, he took 20,000. Took 2,000 men with him. His whole total force was 20,000. Now, after he left, the governors that were together, they got together, and a governor by the name of Allen, he was the governor of Louisiana, he snuck off. While Kirby was working his way toward Mexico, he was on his way to Washington, D.C., where he surrendered on the behalf of the entire Confederacy. And on June the 17th, the 82nd Ohio Regiment, known as the Greyhounds, marched into Washington, D.C. And with little or no, well, the battle of getting to Marshall was harder than the battle of that Marshall. And they took it with hardly any resistance. And that took place on July, on June 17th. Two days later, Granger read the proclamation because he arrived actually in Galveston, June 17. Now, a lot of the story got lost, but I come across it in Marshall, Texas, because in Marshall, Texas, in the county seat for Marshall, they have a Confederate statue. It was put up in 1902 by the Daughters of the Confederacy to honor the the brave Confederate soldiers that defended the city of Marshall. I have a picture of me telling a story right there at the foot of the Confederate statue. Wow. <laughs> and that's what that was my last trip was Marshall. Uh, thank you for asking. Anytime. <laughs>